a lot of odds and ends left on the bike. Uh, need to get all the wiring harnesses uh, figured out in this front headlight bucket. I also need to figure out how I'm going to mount the uh, speedometer, the Fat MX setup. Um, isn't really provisioned for, I think it's it was designed for the headlight bucket that has the speedometer attached. It's interesting, it has these two holes here to mount to this headlight, uh, to the triple tree. Um, and they're perfectly spaced for the threads on the uh, speedometer, but they have built-in nuts, so they're just, you know, I could drill through it to make it work, but it also doesn't seem like it'll quite fit. Anyway, I'm going to see what I can figure out by way of a 3D print to make a, some type of mount that'll accommodate both the triple tree and the speedometer. Uh, other things that need to be figured out, I still am waiting on the... A kickstand assembly and, and foot peg assembly that hopefully will both fit and will both fit the life and motor and be able to accommodate the um, foot brake. You can see here in the back that I just I don't have the foot brake set up at all. I did get the uh, bracket installed here to keep the um, rear hub from spinning, but right now I need to get the linkages there figured out. In here, most of the electronics are pretty close. I have to, I'm waiting on a flasher here and a rectifier um, for those connections. And then I have the battery box and the battery that I'm ready to install uh, once I have those parts. Uh, for the rear tail mount, for the rear license plate and uh, light mount, I do have the grommets that uh, go on the back here to hold the light. Um, what I'm still missing though are the grommets to go through here. I think when I disassembled I remember them disintegrating and I wasn't able to salvage them so I need to figure out a solution. I can't seem to find them individually for sale uh, on the internet so I need to get to the hardware store to figure out what type of solution will work. But I think those are some of the last things that need to get figured out and then lots of small touch-up things getting the turn signals on and some of those other items. One thing that I did want to point out, an astute uh, viewer of the video, of the last video, mentioned that I had the chain clip on the opposite direction. So I had it flipped the other way, which when driving, I guess, was prone to things popping, getting stuck and popping the clip off and the chain coming off. So I uh, wanted to say thank you to James for pointing that out to me and I got the clip there in the right direction now. I also need to get the chain guard mounted and a few other things. I've got the rear tail light assembly pretty much complete. So this was the rear, this was the original uh, tail light bracket that came with the bike. I had it powder coated and uh, really happy with the way that it came out. Uh, it was pretty rusted and uh, corroded, but um, after the powder coating it looks pretty good. There's still, you know, imperfections that you can see in uh, the finish, but overall I'm very pleased with the way that it looks. So the most amount of effort in getting this back together was figuring out the grommets. Um, I had a couple of grommets left over that hadn't been completely corroded, including this one that goes in between the, the fender and the bracket. So thankfully that was good and that was an easy one. I found the right bolt and washer and there's just a nut on the other side that holds it down. Uh, for the grommets that hold this, I had a couple of, I just worked with different grommets that I could find. I ended up having to shave the inside of a couple uh, to make them slot over it so that I could pancake uh, the bracket here so that it was nice and tight but still had uh, some flexibility because you don't if it's too rigid the lights gonna be bouncing too much uh, similarly here these uh, gold colored I'm not sure what these are called it's a washer but it has then a collar attached to it that went through a couple of grommets that I was able to find and shave down and make everything fit but um, I probably spent a good two hours trying to get the various grommets that I was able to find to work uh, for this application but in the end it's it's all finished so it's difficult to see, but I have the wire coming through here. There's a little hook up at the top that holds the three wires. One is for ground, one is for the light, and one is for the brake light. And I have them wired into the harness uh, back here. And then I, the remaining three wires back here are for the left and right turn signals and the ground for it. And then the battery hookup and the uh, rectifier and flasher that I need to install and then the wiring in the back of the bike is done. Okay, I got the rectifier uh, hooked up to the plug. The CDI I had already
had installed. The last plug that I am waiting for is the flasher, but I can go ahead and wait on that because I'm not going to be done with the turn signals for a while anyway. So I'm going to get these down into the valves of the bike, get my uh, battery box and battery installed, and see if we can get all the lights to work. 12 volt battery box and battery is now installed. Uh, so the key the key now switches 12 volt power throughout the bike. I did test uh, the rear light and that was receiving uh, power when I pulled the, one of the brake lines, the rear brake line down here. It's the only thing that's actually uh, hooked up to any switches to, to power the light, but that seemed to work. So it seems like everything uh, is now receiving the 12 volt power. It's just a matter of um, finishing wiring up the rest of the wiring harness to all the electrical components on the bike. So I've been working on a few different uh, 3D print concepts, this being my latest one. Um, the triple tree mount has these two larger, about 11 millimeter diameter uh, holes that are about the size of a big washer. And then the bottom part here of the, the mount that actually holds the headlight bucket is threaded. So what I built here was something to uh, recess into those washers. Um, about three millimeter height uh, plastic spacer with the spacing then it was slightly offset that's why these kind of like cross-eyed eyeballs um, so that the uh, bolts that go through properly line up with the uh, captured threaded nuts on the mount and the way that it works is that it snaps in there so that I can put bolts down this way into the captured nuts and everything's lined up neatly. And I then have this nice mounting plate for uh, the speedometer itself with a cutout for the speedometer cable. So I'm going to go ahead and print this in a uh, more dense format. This was just kind of a, this was print, printed in a pretty low resolution and I'm also gonna use that same carbon infused uh, PLA fiber that I used for the, the key ring. But overall, a pretty simple design to solve a problem that I'd been worrying about for a while. Uh, it should stay pretty hidden overall, so I'm pretty satisfied. And I'm going to put a link in the uh, description here to Thingiverse, so that if anybody else is running into a similar issue, they can actually just download this item and print it themselves. And alternatively, if you need something like this and you don't have access to a printer, uh, just shoot me a note. It's something that uh, you know isn't going to cost much for me to, to print and send out if somebody needs one. So after a few iterations, here's my final mount for the speedometer on the Fat MX front fork assembly that I purchased. I think for most bikes, the way the fork setup comes is fine because the speedometer is integrated into the headlight bucket, but I needed a separate mount to be able to mount the speedometer for my 1976 bike uh, onto the front fork system. So this is what I designed, and this, again, it's gone through a number of iterations. Um, that was in Tinkercad that it was designed, and then here in Ultimaker Cura is what I'm slicing to uh, go to the 3D printer. I'm printing it in a carbon fiber infused PLA uh, with a very high density, so it should be very strong. Here's the final 3D printed mount. This is using again the carbon fiber PLA material and at a very high density. I think it was at an 80% fill rate, so uh, very stiff. Total print time was 2 hours and 40 minutes. And here you can see a few iterations of the mount as I designed and made changes. Uh, this material was all just on regular PLA. This one was in the carbon material. I thought actually this was going to be the one, but I found that uh, I needed to cut this deeper because on the speedometer, it's both the uh, speedometer cable and then this wiring cable that need to be slotted up against uh, that, rec that recessed area. So in this final one, I'll set them side by side. You can see that this was just cut a little bit deeper, but this, as stiff as it is, uh, should be just fine for uh, supporting the speedometer. So we'll get this on the bike and the speedometer mounted up. Just wanted to show how this mount actually fits into the bracket. So there's uh, these two spaces here that um, that snaps into, and then this pushes up, and then there's alignment. There's alignment with the screws uh, through this metal piece on the triple tree, the mount itself, and then into 
the captured nuts on the bottom part of the bracket. The fitment for everything on the mount is pretty much perfect. You can see uh, these bolts these bolts actually came with the kit. I'm not sure how they were supposed to be used, but in this application uh, they look perfect. And then the cutout that I have for the mount here, um, hard to see in the bottom, but enough space for the wire and for the speedometer cable. And then I have uh, large washers and nuts to secure it to the base here. If so I found the perfect size washer that uh, is only about one millimeter away from each of the corners here on the edges. So it gives me as much contact as possible. And then these were some original nuts that uh, I think were originally on the, the speedometer. Uh, but the install here is uh, as good as I could ask for. This is about as sturdy as I want it to be. Um, and I, in looking at it, I don't think there's any value in coming out any further because there's no more surface contact area for the speedometer to be against uh, the bracket if it was extended beyond the point where I have it are just the light bulb rubber covers for the, the three lights inside of, inside of the speedometer. So overall very pleased with the way that this turned out. The speedometer is now situated very neatly dead in the center. Um, you can just see the that ECI logo that I have down there for East Coast-ish, which is a, a cute add um, and again if anybody needs one of these brackets just let me know uh, i'll have the link to the thingiverse um, file so that you can print it yourself and then here finally i have the speedometer cable in uh, it actually came with the fat mx kit uh, to the speedometer sensor on the wheel uh, but everything fits real neatly you can see the cutout allows for just enough space for the wiring harness um, and very neatly fits the speedometer cable and then everything else is uh, very secure. I mean it'll move if you force it but um, otherwise it's uh, about as good of a fitment as I could ask for. And sits very neatly right there in the center of the handlebars.